Let's look at a morning must read off his important essay on the collapse of the U.S. dollar. America's savings current account problems are about to come into play with a vengeance. The rest of the world is starting to look less bad. A weaker dollar, it would boost U.S. competitiveness, but only for a while. Notwithstanding the hubris of American exceptionalism, no leading nation has ever devalued its way to sustain prosperity. Stephen Roach, could it be that big of a dollar move where we move from depreciation to a consideration of devaluation? Well, Tom, I mean, uh, the problem with uh, the U.S. and its uh, saving current account of balances is that they, they were already uh, setting us up for a problem before the pandemic hit. Uh, the net national savings rate, which is the broadest measure of domestic saving, it's the savings of businesses, households, and the government sector adjusted for depreciation, was at 1.4% uh, of uh, national income in the first quarter of 2020. And the average, 45-year uh, average from 1960 to 2005, was 7. So we were at the, you know, the lower end of an acceptable bound. And then, you know, we uh, have introduced this massive relief package, which is going to bl uh, blow our budget deficits uh, higher than we've ever seen and take uh, <clears throat> debt-to-GDP ratios uh, well above those which uh, were evident uh, in um, uh, the end of World War II. So I look at that and I say, okay, with deficits up, with debt up, with uh, savings likely to go uh, sharply into negative territory, which is going to be even worse than it was in, during the global financial crisis, the current account is probably going to uh, exceed its prior record of uh, you know, minus 6.3 percent of GDP in mm -hmm. 2005, and currencies are designed to cushion the blow of an exploding uh, right. current account in the context of, of weak domestic savings. So okay. I think a dollar decline is inevitable. What you're hearing here, folks, is textbook Stephen Roach. I mean, this is why the guy became acclaimed at Morgan Stanley. Stephen, our audience may not be able to articulate net national savings, but they know a free lunch when they see it. When do we actually pay for this debt buildup? Well, you know, right now, of course, you know, nobody worries about deficits and debt because interest rates are close to zero. And so the, the cost of servicing the debt, the interest payments that, uh, you know, the, the U.S. Treasury has to make are de minimis. But, you know, the question is, Tom, you know, can, can we count on interest rates to stay at zero in perpetuity? Uh, and, you know, that comes back to, in, in, you know, things like inflation uh, and uh, relative risk premia. And, you know, in a uh, weaker dollar environment uh, where the U.S. has also uh, been backing away from its commitment to globalization through all of these very protectionist and nationalistic policies of the current administration, uh, the, the – the willingness uh, of the uh, uh, the world to fund uh, the, the, the budget deficits of a saving short U.S. economy gets drawn in, into question, and that has interest rate implications. So uh, the idea that there's no consequences uh, for uh, deficits and debt I think is absolutely absurd. Near term, there's no immediate debt service cost, but come on, we can do a better way of assessing long-term consequences than looking at, than looking at short-term interest rate expenses over the next, you know, few quarters. Uh, Stephen, how difficult also is it to understand the impact that, you know, COVID-19 and others, and frankly just foreign policy, has on global supply chains? And given what you've just said about debt and supply chains, are we going to see a more deflationary pressure, or do you worry that 18 months from now we'll talk about inflation in America? No, I, I actually think the supply chain... Um, uh, a question is a very meaningful one. There's, there's, you know, clearly evident, Francine, in during this um, pandemic, um, uh, concerns over supply chain security with respect to medical supplies, and even in the case of the U.S., 
supply chain security with respect to domestic food supplies, uh, to say nothing of the, the great toilet paper uh, syndrome. Uh, but, you know, we, we believe, and this was articulated by a pathetic editorial written um, in the New York Times several weeks ago by U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer, that all we got to do is just, you know, uh, move from offshoring to reshoring, bring the jobs back home, and America will be fine again. Well, what Mr. Lighthizer, who's a lawyer who knows nothing about economics, doesn't realize is that with reshoring comes um, moving production back to higher-cost domestic platforms, which is inflationary uh, for uh, the U.S. and, and is a, the, uh, the functional equivalent of a tax hike on American consumers. You don't just push a button and end supply chains. And the research shows, by the way, that not only the supply chains important in holding down global inflation, but they're very sticky. They take years and years to assemble, and you just don't uh, transform them overnight.